Uh, the offseason program that we've had, uh, the attitude that this team has sort of presented, the work that we were able to get done, the conditioning level that we were able to achieve uh, with a lot of the guys, um, I think the, the commitment has been good. Um, so we had a really good offseason program. Uh, and I think the most important thing about the first practice is um, you know, I don't care what grades you're in, how long you've been here, whether you're an early enrollee, whether you're a senior, um, everybody has got to focus on uh, what they need to do to improve. So this is a good starting point for us. Uh, we're not disappointed in where we are, but we're certainly not satisfied uh, with, with where we are, uh, where we want to go and how we're going to get there. But everybody has to have the ability to self-assess uh, because I think that's the best way to improve. Uh, there's not one player out there that's playing for us right now that doesn't have something that they can improve on. Um, obviously, you know, it's a new team. You're looking for new leadership. Uh, there's guys that have opportunities at several positions, and there's competition at those positions. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how, you know, some of that stuff, you know, shakes out for us. But, um, you know, I, we got a couple guys that are going to be out for the spring. Um, Corey Brooks is out for the spring. Darian Dalcourt will be out for the spring. Keanu Cote, all those guys are out for the spring, whether they had injuries coming out of the season or whatever. Uh, all the other players uh, are doing some portion of practice and are making some progress toward being able to practice at some point in time in the spring. And those assessments will be made, you know, as they make progress, you know, throughout the spring. Uh, I know you probably asked me about the early enrollees. I'm sure if you got to speak to them, that I'll tell you that uh, there's a lot of anxiety. My first practice, my first practice as a college player, um, they're all sort of, you know, going through a different level of a learning curve uh, that they have to go through. Um, and, you know, we're pleased to have them here. I think it's going to be good for their development. And I think, you know, some of these guys will be able to contribute to our team. Um, you know, we also have, you know, three transfers. Uh, all of which uh, I think will, you know, create a role on the team for themselves. Uh, they were all impressive out there today. Uh, you're talking about older guys who have played uh, in this league or in, in the ACC, and uh, I think those three guys will be very helpful for us. So I'm excited about the new coaches that we have. Um, every one of those guys have made a very positive contribution with their energy, enthusiasm, their knowledge, uh, how they help contribute to you know solving some of the issues and the problems that we sort of uncovered in self-scout uh, in terms of things that we need to improve on. So uh, we're excited about the staff, we're excited about the new enrollees, we're excited about the transfers. Um, nobody likes it that you have guys that you know can't go out there and practice, um, but we also have to think about how we're going to get these guys ready to play next season. So um, all in all, I'm very encouraged by you know, sort of the, the effort, energy, attitude that, you know, the players have had, and it's a fun group to coach. Okay, we'll start in the back of the pipe. I wanted to ask about the, the analyst hires that you made between Zach Mettenberger and Todd Grantham and, and Derek Dooley. Well, Todd Grantham and Derek Dooley have worked for me before. Uh, I've known Zach Mettenberger for a long time. Um, it's Ken Lee's and Hunt's son in law, and Ken and I are really good friends. Um, and. You know, Derek has worked for me in the past. He's been an offensive coordinator in this league. He's coached in the league. Uh, Todd's been a, a defense coordinator, you know, in college in this league for a long time. So uh, those guys can, you know, add significant knowledge and experience uh, to help solve some of the issues and problems that we have. And uh, I think, you know, uh, Zach is a very, very good young guy who's very bright and has a bright future. And uh, I'm sure he's going to learn. And uh, he's got great work work ethic. And, He's been very committed to doing a good job since he's been here. In the middle of there. Kendall Randolph is a guy that's been in the program now six years. Um, he can play tackle for you, he can flex out and play tight end. What kind of versatility is he bringing? What kind of example does he set? Because he, he does whatever you guys ask him to do for the other guys who can sort of have that sort of mindset on the team. Well, I, I, I really love it when you know guys like Kendall Randolph you know, show great resiliency, perseverance, um, to continue to want to try to develop uh, as players, uh, make a commitment to the team to do whatever you need to do to help the team be successful. And you know, this is one of the guys that I'm most proud of uh, in terms of where he came, where he came from, 
from when he was a young player to where he is now, uh, to graduate, to, to become a leader, uh, to set a really good example, to have uh, you know sort of great goals and aspirations for what he wants to accomplish in the future, and you know what his focus is and his commitment is to it. I think this is a great example of what college football should be, uh, and you know he's created a lot of value for himself here by. Uh, what, what he's developed into, and we're really, really proud of him, and I'm really happy to have him back. I think, you know, the first thing we're going to do is let him compete for a starting job in the offensive line, uh, which is going to be our first priority for him in the spring. Chris, go around the left. Chris? Uh, I want to ask about tight ends coach Joe Cox, and uh, we haven't seen the tight ends coach just focus on that position, so I'm wondering, is the position got more important or is that just kind of the way it worked out with this coaching staff? Well, philosophically, I think, um, you know, we've had different blends of staff here. Uh, and, you know, we had six coaches on offense and Mike Loxley walked around. So to have the special teams coach be the tight end coach still gave you five and a half coaches on offense. You know, as the staff transpired, we ended up with an extra coach on defense. So like last year, you know, we, we were a little bit imbalanced and that's the reason for making the changes that we made uh, to bring a guy in. If we're going to have a special teams coach on defense, let's at least have five guys that are focused on every position on offense uh, and not have what I call four and a half. One guy that's in special teams trying to coach the tight ends too. So uh, I think that can be overwhelming sometimes. Um, depending on how, you know, many other guys you have on the offensive staff. So um, I think it creates more balance for us. I do think it's a position now that requires a little more attention because a tight end used to be a guy that lined up in the C area beside the tackle and put his hand in the dirt and that's where he played from. Now the guy plays off the ball, he's playing like a fullback, he plays on the ball, he's playing like an old fashioned tight end, he flexes out, he's playing like a wide receiver. So I think that for those guys to get a little bit more focused attention is probably really important. And I think Joe Cox is one of the you know bright young guys that uh, has been very, I've been very impressed with uh, his knowledge uh, and uh, I think he's gonna help us. So two more, Charlie, and then Kevin. Yeah, you mentioned Kendall competing on the offensive line. Just what have you seen from the young tackles and their progress from last season and how do you kind of hope to see that carry over into the spring? Well, you know, I, we've had one practice. So I don't know how I can assess anybody's progress from last year to this year. I know they've worked hard in the off season. I think there was better condition. Uh, I think they've improved their bodies. Um, so, I mean, Damian George had a really good off season. Um, so I think, you know, we're encouraged by the progress that he makes, whether he plays guard or tackle. Uh, we're gonna, you know, see if Javion Cohen should be a guard or a tackle. Um, we'll see if J.C. Latham should be a guard or a tackle, Kendall Randolph to, to be a tackle. Um, you know, Tony Brockemeyer has, you know, got a chance to compete at the position. Uh, he was kind of in and out a little bit, fighting some injury things uh, in the offseason, but we think that, you know, he'll be able to make progress in the spring. So uh, there's a lot of competition at the position, and, you know, quite frankly, we're moving a lot of guys around. We're trying to see how... Uh, we can get the best five guys out there to play. So, um, and I'm, I'm not disappointed in the progress that any of them have made to this point. Okay. I'll, I'll stick on the offensive line. Your, your last four title winning teams have had a team captain at center. When you're looking to put them together the best five, is that one of the first places you look is to kind of establish that center position and kind of move out or? Well, you know, I, I think center position is always important, but we have two guys that started significant games last year that are both centers. So, uh, uh, Aaron Dapport played really well last year, and um, so did Seth when he got the opportunity to play. So, um, you know, Derek's going to be out in the spring, but when he comes back, and Seth's a good leader, he's a tough guy. Um, you know, I, I feel really good about those two guys just trying to get the other guys in the right spot and maybe who do we develop to be a third center because that's always an important um, spot to you know have somebody that can fill if you lose a guy. All right coach thank you. All right, thank you guys.